Sie haben das nicht toll gemacht, das ist zu elegant tonight. Der Dresscode war sehr elegant. Du bist gut, du bist gut. Du bist der Gast der Ehre. Du bist gut, du bist gut. 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 Ja, es ist fantastisch. Es ist fantastisch. All right, so let's just. Ja, uh, yeah, let's, let's wait. Uh, let's wait a bit. Uh, we'll let enough people join and then we'll, uh, we'll get to it all. I'll introduce you and we'll, we'll get going. It's going to be a lot of fun, but let's, uh, I see that people are, people are. It's okay. Up. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We wait, we wait, we wait. People from Istanbul. Yes. Hello. Hello. Are you recognizing these names? Some of them. Uh, it's difficult. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Okay, 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 a lot of people. <laughs> okay. People are popping up. All right, I see. Good stuff. Well, let's, uh, should we get started? What do you think? I think we're, uh, we're uh, well, let's give it another minute or two if, if it's okay, just because it's right at, uh, right at the starting time now. And, Slowly. <laughs> yes, they're popping up. Yeah, yeah. tell me. Very nice, very nice background, Amadeo. <laughs> <laughs> Historical center of Naples. Yeah, the studio, our na from our Naples studios. But you didn't see what the, well, there is a, all the rest of the set. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, oh, no, don't give it away. Not yet, not yet. Oh, later, okay. later, later. It's a surprise. <laughs> a little sneak preview. So... Good. Let's give it just one more minute as, as people. Yeah, no problem. No problem. People come in and uh, I see someone named Alberto with your family name. Yeah, <laughs> my cousin Alberto. <laughs> okay, very good. He's an expert of food too. Oh, well, good. Yeah. I hope he sends in some questions. So good. Well, the here. questions from Italy are easier for me because my stress is speaking one hour in English tonight. <laughs> you have to, to know that uh, in Italy we say that uh, when you have a broken English, in Italy we translate uh, inglese maccheronico. Maccheronico means uh, that your English is very poor, but we use the word maccheronico. And tonight uh, is uh, the, the perfect word because my English tonight will be maccheronico. <laughs> well, with that, that's a perfect, uh, perfect way for us to get started. So uh, welcome everyone out there to um, another uh, episode of CBTV. And tonight we're launching a new program uh, that we're calling CB Pantry Raid. And basically what we're doing is it's a virtual visit um, to, our, to the pantries of, of some of the people who work with us around, around the world. And tonight we're with Amadeo Colella in Naples. And he's going to give us a tour of his pantry, specifically looking at pasta. And the idea uh, with the ingredients, these kinds of building blocks that have been um, with these places for centuries and have sustained places over the centuries. So pasta seems like a perfect thing to look at. Um, Amadeo, just to introduce him, besides being our, our city, our, our head person in Naples, is also an author. He's an organizer of a variety of cultural events from film series to uh, Neapolitan bingo, which maybe we can talk about later. Uh, he's a gourmand, he's a bon vivant. He's, uh, he's so many things uh, and also just a lot of fun. Uh, so Amadeo, thank you for... But I was, I was, before to yeah. be being an actor and doing bingo, something like this, it was uh, for 24 years, and people know I was a university researcher. So in a, in, in a, in a, in a company studying uh, engineering of telecommunication. So totally different from now. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, but, but, but really, really uh, the best person to talk about uh, the subject uh, for tonight, which is pasta. Um, so, but before we get started on pasta, Amadeo, I just want you to tell us a little bit um, in terms of Neapolitan history, because I know that, you know, 
Naples has had an interest, interesting history with outbreaks, with, uh, with plagues and things like that. So maybe just give us a little bit of background because it's not the first time, right, that Naples has had to deal with something like this. Yeah, you know that I am, uh, I am uh, the wrong person to ask something about Naples because, because I am so proud to be Neapolitan, to, to, have, to be born uh, under the shadow of Vesuvius. <laughs> you, you, Naples, uh, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a very old history, 3,000 years. I'm speaking to a man uh, when 3,000 years there was nothing in the place where you are in this moment. And uh, even uh, it's uh, older than Rome. Naples was the bigger port of Mediterranean. So this means that in these 3,000 years, the culture of Naples, the history, the gastronomy, the language, you know that we speak Neapolitan language, that has been influenced from so many influences uh, proceeding from all the corners, not only Mediterranean, from all, from all the five continents. Because Naples was the bigger port of Mediterranean, and 3,000 years, this means that also the kitchen, Neapolitan kitchen, has been influenced, it was born 3,000 years ago. We still today, we eat food that uh, proceeding from the, the Greek domination 3,000 years ago, from the Roman domina domination 2,000 years ago. Pasta, the, 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 the topic of today, is only the, 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 the last one. It's only 500 years old. Pasta was born in Naples. The, the, the automatic way to produce pasta in Gragnano, in the area of Castellammare, around the Naples, was born only 500 years ago. So this means that uh, the, the pasta is the younger element, the younger ingredient of our culture, but Neapolitan are pasta eaters, macaroni eaters. Because you know that uh, until the uh, 16th century, so 500 years ago, Neapolitan people was called Leaves eater, mangia foglie, mangia foglie, leaves. People who eat leaves, like leaves from the trees. Yeah, yeah, we, we eat a lot because Campania Felix, that was the Roman name of our region, was yeah. very generous in producing, it was volcanic land. So we had any kind of, uh, of leaves, any kind of vegetables, and we eat a lot of vegetables. And in all Europe, we were called leaves eaters. Mangia foglie. But then, 500 years ago, we fall in love for pasta, for macaroni. That is a, a product that it, it was not, not autochthon. It was not from Naples. It, it, it came from Sicily. And in Sicily, it arrives through the Arabs. It was an Arab invention. Oh, there is a legend in America. Some people say that the noodles were imported by Marco Polo. Uh, but this, this is what, because pasta, pasta di Gragnano, yeah. the, the DOC pasta di Gragnano is very famous also in America. A lot of people uh, eat uh, Italian pasta and Italian tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But uh, 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 so this is why there is a legend that uh, was Marco Polo to introduce the pasta in Naples. In, in, in Europe, it's not so. Uh, Pasta, we have to admit that that is an Arab invention, and our culture has been influenced in the sea, yes, from Greeks, Roman, but moreover, Arabians. Uh, the Arabs, as a great necessity, they have to keep the grain that is worth very, very highly deferable to, to the hot. So it was, uh, moreover, for the caravans, who have to, they have to cross the desert, how to keep the, the grain, the wet. So that, that was the idea, the, to melt with, the, uh, with water and to dry this, uh, um, and they obtained the pasta, that it was only a system to keep for a long time the wet. So this was the idea. And, and, and it's a little bit like, it's like what couscous is, I think, in North Africa now, right? It's like something similar to that, right? Yeah. It's a little bit like couscous. Yes, it's the same, the same way of uh, the same idea. And this is why I, I, I cannot support when people make uh, very locality. Our history, our culture has been so influenced for all the places of the world. We eat pasta because north of Africa. 
So uh, we have to thank these people. Uh, you know that uh, uh, our culture has been so great because we speak so many languages, we, 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 we eat so many food from all, all the parts of the world. And the great cultures are the result of layers, layers of uh, uh, steps of evolution, okay? <laughs> So when you close, when you close inside, you you will never get better in your life. Yeah. So, but I'm gonna. I want to just get back. So pasta in the past has helped support Neapolitans in in times of. I know there's been outbreaks of in the past. What cholera? Other other kind of. Yeah. Imagine. Okay. The, the history of Naples has been pointed by so many uh, epidemic and uh, pestilence, uh, like today. But today is a, a mondial pandemia. Yeah. So it's different. But uh, the history of Naples. Uh, Naples in the 18th century was one of the bigger city of, of Europe. It was the second city of Europe, but the after second Paris. Largest, second largest city after Paris. Yeah. After Paris and. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, is uh, many times is uh, um, people uh, thinks that it was a place of only epimedic resilience. Uh, moreover, it was uh, we have eruption of Vesuvius and uh, destruction and the earthquakes. Okay, that that was a terrible century, the 17th century, uh, and uh, but but oh, excuse me. There is, a, there is, there is, the, there is, I have to, to, to turn off the, the fire, because I am in the kitchen. Okay. All Look, right. I am cooking tonight, so, so I, I have to, to turn off. Okay, okay. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, the history of Naples, um, has been influenced by so many problems, um, epidemic, pestilence, but at that time, we, we became the, the most important city in the world in terms of culture. The best painting, the, the best uh, quantity and quality of art was done in the 17th century, in the century of earthquake, uh, pestilence. And do you know why? Because Neapolitan people went to try to solve all the, these problems. They had only one, one option. To, to ask to the God to, to solve the problems and how to do that. Realizing the, the, the most beautiful painting, the most beautiful statues, the churches. This is why for their problem that today in Naples there is the, 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 the cultural heritage, the biggest uh, cultural patrimony of, of the world probably in Italy and in Naples too. So... Let's so I am so proud. I am so proud. <laughs> you want to speak of an epidemic, but I speak of a great... Uh, <laughs> so I, I have to say that uh, in our last epidemic was in 73, so very recently. Yeah. We, had the, we had in Naples, we had cholera. Okay. Cholera, I arrived in Naples, uh, I was only 10. I was, I, I was 10, and I remember to, I, I did the, the wax uh, against the cholera, and it was a problem. It was. Uh, it arrived in Naples about the the, the masses. So the the masses uh, uh, suddenly disappear for all the city because Neapolitan people eat a lot of seafood and uh, mussels and uh, uh, mongole clams something like that. So <laughs> let's let's get to pasta. And and I just wanted to read a little. You wrote a few uh, weeks ago when when all of this started a really wonderful uh, diary piece uh, for us, for Culinary Backstreets. And uh, if I can just read from it a little bit, because I love what you said. Uh, you said, my daughter enters my study and asks me, what pasta will we eat today? Yesterday, while checking the pantry, we noticed that the short pasta is about to run out. All is well known, as is well known, a Neapolitan who remains with less than 20 packets of pasta goes into a panic. The so various short pasta shapes were on the list of things to buy yesterday but there was only rice left on the supermarket shelves, obviously ignored by everyone. We Neapolitans consider rice and tea as medicinal, something to help with stomach pains. And then there was a fair amount of smooth penne pasta. Obviously, I didn't buy them. In my house, we only eat rich pasta. So let's, let's get into pasta then, because I thought that was a great introduction. Uh, you know, 20 different kinds of pasta in the pantry. 
only the rich kind. So show us a little bit. Tell us about what's going on in your pasta pantry right now, Amadeo. Okay, we ninety uh, percent of the of my tank of pasta my, I have in uh, in cassaforte. How you say in, in uh, okay? Uh, uh, most of them ninety percent is with stripes. Is with the uh, ribbed pasta. But you know why ribbed pasta is more important? Uh, be, because uh, there is a larger in ribbed pasta. There is a larger surface to to guess the the sauce. So yeah. the pasta is able to to absorb more quantity of sauce, and the the, the most important kind of pasta we have is the le penne or rigatoni. So we have in rigatoni is, is perfect, for example, to cook with the ragu. Ragu is Neapolitan sauce, the a sauce of meat. So and so every kind, every size of pasta. Uh, is perfect for for uh, for for the combination with a, with another al element. So in this moment in my house we have 90% of uh, of uh, stripe the pasta, rib the pasta. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I like for me, uh, you know that uh, it depends from the people uh, which one of us go to to to, to go shopping. Neapolitan if we, if my house, if I have less than uh, 20, 30 packets of pasta, I go in, in panic. And it's, it's like when you drive and the light of the reserve of the tank, you know, <laughs> the light's on. So you, you go in the panic. I, uh, imagine in this situation, in this situation that a lot of panic, a lot of people go on panic. And... Uh, if I if I open my pantry, if you want, I can open my pantry. Yes, yes. I, uh, okay, I, I will show you. First of all, I, I want to show you uh, because all the, the the pasta I have prepared for you. Oh, I have okay. prepared all kinds of pasta: spaghetti, vermicelli, ziti, bugatini, long pasta and small pasta. Ave Maria, Padre Nostro. Ditalino, Ditale, Rigatoni, and all the pasta, the signs of Pasquale, the number man, Orecchiette. And I have a story for each one of these uh, sides of pasta. So I want, I want to show you my kitchen, and uh, I, I want to open my pantry. Okay, uh, okay, all, most of the packets are on, on, on the table in this moment. But uh, more or less, we have 30 packets of pasta. And uh, as you can see, we don't have rice. Uh, this is very special. This is special because in Nib Okay, I mean, we have one packet of rice. Yeah, this one. In case anybody uh, gets sick. Yeah, it's very sad. It's very sad because he's alone. Because we never use rice. And when, when my wife asked me to... to, to to prepare the rice, uh, she she had checked the date of expired because probably <laughs> probably it has been expired because in, in our culture we we never we never have uh, we never have uh, uh, rice never 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 M mostly mo most Napolitan uh, me too when I was young we have twice the pasta per day but uh, now we have a pasta only once per day so it's, uh, and, uh, okay, but because time is changing uh, <laughs> because we have to be in good shape you know that uh, the fascism fascisti Mussolini, he take yeah. a great war against the pasta really? because they say that the perfect italian is a perfect shape the ra the race the pure race has not to be fat so but it, it was a, a war that uh, he lost he lost many wars Mussolini <laughs> but he lost he lost also the wars against the pasta yeah that was a, a, a bad fight to pick I think yeah so, so show us show us the pastas on your table there take us take us on a guided tour. Okay, I have I have a history for for every pasta. Uh, okay, I, I wanna I wanna start from the, the oldest one, uh, the oldest pasta. Uh, we call in Neapolitan language we call macaroni. Macaroni is from maccare. Maccare it was Greek. It means 
pushing down, maccare, ammaccare, we say in Italian also, ammaccare. Maccare, it means to push down the, 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 the paste of uh, yeah, uh, yeah. flour and water, and uh, then to, to, to push down and to plate. And so the, 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 the first kind of pasta, also Ovidius, uh, Ovidius, a Greek uh, Latin writer, spoke about the lagana. Lagana, it was the simple pasta. Simple pasta, it means that uh, it's a simple, simply a uh, paste of uh, wheel and water and then uh, um, flat and then just cut in, 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 some, in some way. So we have the, the oldest pasta was lagana and from like, lagana, like, lasagna. lasagna. And lasagna is the most typical place we eat, uh, usually in Carnival. Uh, it's not Carnival without lasagna, okay? We cannot, uh, uh, for us, uh, lasagna is perfectly in, in Carnival. And it's also an historical plate, because lasagna uh, was the favorite plate of the King Bourbons in Napoli. In the last 200 years, they had the Bourbon lasagna, that is really the best lasagna that is not made with the, the meat like uh, bolognese, but is, uh, it's, it's made with the, the really the, the best old ragu. If lasagna, lasagna is the, the oldest, there is the youngest, uh, it's very it's close to lasagna. Okay. And this calamarata, you know, look at this. Okay, calamarata is the youngest. Is the, the last invention of more or less of 50 years ago, in 72, 73, they invented like rings of squid, the rings of squid. And this is why the name of this kind of pasta is calamarata. And the best way, calamaro in Italian is squid. And the best way to cook calamarata, of course, is with rings of squid. This is why in your plate you have. Uh, it's very similar, uh, pasta and squid, and it's uh, fabulous, it's uh, gorgeous, it's sounding uh, really uh, unbelievable. And uh, so I want to speak also of the perfect combination. Lasagna, it's with, uh, especially with the meat, with okay. the soul, with meat, and the calamarata with calamari. But in, in the history of the pasta, the best macaroni was this one. This one is Maccheroni della Zita. Zita. Okay, this one. Wait, we can Perce see. Perce Okay. Excuse me. Oh, something. Oh, no, I did wrong. He, re he reversed uh, the camera. But no, we get a nice view. We're getting... Okay, 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 okay. This is Maccheroni della Zita. Zita. Oh, wow. uh, the Zita in, 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 in Italian means the, the, the young lady who's looking for... Uh, the young lady was looking for husband. So the zita, it means that this was the pasta, the best quality of pasta, because this kind of pasta was reserved for the marriage of the zita. So uh, in the marriage, in the, in the, marriage, in the dinner marriage, you, you have to use the best quality of pasta. And this is why still today the best quality of pasta is the zito and the zito we, we take uh, one one per one and we cut and we cut before preparing in slices of three or four centimeters and the best of uh, uh, and this usually make uh, this is a, an activity made by the youngest of the family and uh, sometimes when you break the the, the zito there is some small pieces of pasta that is the, the, the corners, small corners. That is the, really the dream of every Neapolitan. Of course, Zito, the best, uh, the death of Zito, when we say the death, we mean the, the best of the, uh, the, the combination. Yeah. Uh, the best of the best with Zito is Zito with Genovese, Genovese sauce. Genovese sauce is a sauce made with meat and with onions. But the quantity of onions is unbelievable. <laughs> the tons of, of onions. So the, the perfect destination for Zita is Genovese, but we can eat also with ragu. The 
causes of uh, zeta, the causes of zeta are the rigatoni. Rigatoni are the causes. That is the, the, the uh, as I told you, the, the rib, the pasta, rigatoni with ribs. Ta, 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 ta. That is the very, very popular to eat with the ragu, with bolognese. It is very typical. Uh, I'm, I'm so, when, when, you, when you say ragu, can you just explain just very quickly what, what you yeah. mean by ragu? The ragu is the, the most symbolic sauce of Naples. Yeah. It's made with tomatoes and meat. Okay. Usually meat of, uh, of ox, okay? Uh, but somebody adds also the, the pig. But, um, and the, 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 the typical of the ragu is that he has to boil the, the sauce of tomatoes boil for three or four or five hours. So okay. it's a very long plate. And in, in Neapolitan language, we say that the, 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 the tomatoes, papatea, pa, 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 is, is onomatopoeic. It's from the, the sound yeah. of the, 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 the tomatoes that uh, with, with a very slow boiling. Oh, simmer, simmer, slow simmer. Yeah, very slow. Because it's like that the meat gives to the, to the tomatoes all the flour, all the energy, and then it's, 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 it's die. Imagine that many Neapolitans does not eat the meat after the, the ragu. They eat only the tomatoes. And this is the ragu. It's the, it's the most symbolic plate. But we have to thank America for the ragu. We have to thank Americans that still today, in America, they call the ragu, the Neapolitan ragu, they call the, the Neapolitan sauce. Uh, we have to thank America because, as you know, in Europe, in, you, Europeans, you know, are, are Europa-centric, Europa-centric. But uh, we have to thank America because uh, until 200 years ago, we didn't know tomatoes. Yeah. Because tomatoes arrived in Europe after the discovery of America, and there arrived also the potatoes, and there arrived also the chocolate. Oh, how can how can we have a life without tomatoes, <laughs> without potato, chocolate? Oh, it would be... Very, very different. So, very, very difficult. Uh, so, the causing of yes. uh, the Zeta are the rigatoni. And, oh, by the way, uh, if I have less than 20 packets, we go on reserve. It's the light of the tank. Yes. But, yes. Uh, of, of course, uh, there are three or four sites that we have in great quantity permanently. For example, I have not less than five or six packets of olio spaghetti, because spaghetti is the most, the most popular. Yeah. For example, in my house, uh, very, very popular are butterfly. I don't see the butterfly. Uh, they are somewhere. Okay, these ones, the butterfly. And the butterfly, uh, uh, do you understand why the name? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it was invented 100 years ago in Liguria, close to Genova, Genova, because in Genova, in that region, there, there are a lot of uh, producers of pasta. It's like our region. And it was invented 100 years ago. And in Italy, we use uh, mostly, for example, with salmon. Um, yeah, we, with a sauce, with salmon, or uh, some with, with sauce, of course. So this is farfalle, butterflies, and there is always something sexual. You know that the farfalla in, in Italy means also another, another, another part of the women, okay? <laughs> farfalla. So, uh, rib the pasta, stripe the pasta, larger um, surface exposed, and then we arrive to, to the long pasta, pasta lunga. The main rep uh, division of pasta is in pasta lunga and pasta corta. So, return back to our, to our plate. I have to start again. Okay. So, uh, pasta lunga, this one, and pasta corta, this other one. In pasta lunga, the most famous pasta lunga, of course, is vermicelli. Vermicelli, is well, the, the word vermicelli is from warm, warm, so it's, it's like the animals. Yeah. <laughs> Because in the, in the old time, vermicelli was made by hand. So um, it was not so regular. Uh, every, every, every one was uh, short, one was long, one was uh, so very, uh, very different from one from each other. 
Uh, and this is why, after that, uh, the name we, we keep in vermicelli from warm. While spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti is from um, string, string, the string of the shoes is a spago. And this is why the name of spaghetti, spaghetti in Italian is string. And it, this is the, the most popular size of pasta probably in the world. Uh, this kind of pasta in this case, uh, okay, because we, now we are in, in the age of bio, uh, natural, uh, integrale, and th this one is integrale, bio and integrale, something like this. I know that in America, uh, in America also there is a great uh, crazy conversion on, uh, on the bio, no? I yeah. asked you. Yeah, I mean, organic and... Uh, organic, organic, yeah. organic. Yeah, in Italy, in Italy, most of people uh, are happy if they, they find the, 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 the right, uh, the bio, okay, you know, on a packet. But it's a, it's a, usually pasta in the past. Okay, today is very important, of course. And then... After pasta lunga, yeah, more yeah. we continue with pasta lunga. Oh, I have to say that spaghetti is the typical pasta that we do with clams. Pasta a vongole, spaghetti a vongole is the, the typical food that any every tourist arriving to Naples wants to taste. Spaghetti a vongole. So the, while the, the vermicelli we usually use with. The, the puttanesca. I don't know if you know this plate. Puttanesca. Yes, tell us about it. Yeah, puttanesca, it means uh, prostitute. Put, puta, puttana in Italian is uh, puta in Spanish, prostitute in English. Puttanesca is the typical dish of the, the house of love, the house of appointments, many years ago. Yeah. Until 1958, in Naples, we have the... the house of law. Now, today, we, we call them le case chiuse, the closed house. Okay. And uh, uh, in that time, uh, usually for customers, the prostitutes prepare also some very quick food, so which is quickly then uh, uh, sauce with tomatoes, olives, uh, coppers, uh, so very, very fast. And this is why this kind of uh, or receipt uh, still today is called uh, pasta puttanesca, okay? And then, uh, of course, we have bucatini. Bucatini, there is a hole inside. It's uh -huh. a little spaghetti. Uh, uh -huh. okay. All right. <laughs> yes, continue. Uh, and uh, bucatini is perfect for carbonara. Bucatini alla carbonara is the other, the other plate that tourists are always ask. Even if in Italy it's not so popular today, but there is a lot of people that are crazy for, for Bucatini Carbonara. Uh, in this case, the, the hole is perched all, all, all along, um, and so the flower is, is perfect because the, all the condiments enter all along the, the, the long spaghetti. Uh, do you know that Carbonara arrived in Naples after the Second World War? Yeah, right really? after the Second World War with Americans again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah again. Because uh, Americans uh, introduced more or less the. Come si chiama? Il, uh, okay, the il guanciale. In Italy we say guanciale. The, oh, the, the pork gel. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, this is what you have in breakfast. I just say I don't remember the name. Okay. okay. Bacon, bacon. Yeah. Bacon. Yeah. And we have in Italy the eggs. So after the Second World War, uh, between um, Americans uh, in Rome, it was born, it, this is still today, typical of Rome, uh, Bugatini alla carbonara. I, I want to say the word, but I, okay, of course, I don't remember. Okay. And then... So every kind of pasta with every kind. And then we have historical plates, historical plates. Look at this. This is uh, mafaldine. Uh, somebody called them, if they are smaller, they are tripoline, or if they are bigger, they are manfredi. So the idea is a tagliatella. Tagliatella, tagliatella you know, is typical for any kind of food, any kind of sauce, tagliatella. And uh, 
this is Tripolini with the uh, uh, with oh, this wow. plate, okay. Uh, this is historical plate because you know that Italy is in a colonial adventure in north of Africa. The yeah, capital yeah. of Libya was Tripoli. So uh, at that time was born this kind of pasta called like the capital of Libya, Tripolini. The other name was Mafaldine. Yes, Mafalda di Savoia was the queen, the queen of Italy. So uh, in homage to the coronal adventure during the fascism was born this kind of pasta. And the bigger side is Manfredi. Manfredi is, uh, was the king of Manfredi, uh, was the king of southern Italy. And there is a town, Manfredonia, where it's very typical this kind of uh, food, this kind of pasta. Manfredonia uh -huh. from Manfredi with the ricotta cheese. Uh -huh. And this is the typical plate of Easter. Yes, in Easter, uh, so three days ago, we had uh, for lunch Manfredi con la ricotta. Manfredi with, with the ricotta cheese. That sounds amazing. So every, every kind of pasta. And so it's not easy. And if we start, for example, if we start to look for, for these ones. Yeah. Yeah, we have the, the small, this, this small kind of pasta. The name is Ave Maria. Uh -huh. And then we have Pater Noster. <laughs> and then we have Ditalino. It is always bigger. And then we have Ditale. And then we have Mezzi Rigatoni, half Rigatoni. And then we have Rigatoni. So imagine in, in every house, in every Neapolitan house, we have any kind of pasta because depending on any kind of food we want to eat, for example, <laughs> for example, today is uh, beans, okay? You know that uh, in Italy it's very popular, in Naples, in the Neapolitan kitchen, it's very popular to eat uh, uh, legumes like beans, uh, chickpeas with pasta, but we cook Chick pasta directly in the chickpeas. We don't join after the separate cooking. This is typical of our cook. And uh, for example, Ave Maria, Ave Maria and Padre Noster is yeah. typical. Is typical of uh, uh, when we when we do uh, small pasta, for example, with broth with the uh, broth. Uh, uh, oh, oh, with some meat, with like, a soup. Okay, yeah. or so, bean broth, or... Yeah, and do you know why this name, this old name, that uh, Ave Maria and Father Noster? Because oh. at that time, we, we didn't have our, our, our grandmother, they didn't have the, the time, the, the, the cooking time. Uh, on yeah. the packet of pasta today, is written for, first of all, the cooking time, how long has to be the cook, uh, 12, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 8 minutes, 3 minutes, it depends on the size of pasta. At that time we don't have in this small size of pasta, so you, you put on the water, the time of saying an Ave Maria, and the, the pasta was ready. Okay, this is why they called Ave Maria, these small ones. Of course, there were also the Pater Noster. Pater Noster, as you know, is a little bit longer it's uh, a little bit longer than Ave Maria. This is why the time for cooking, and so this is why the pasta is a little bit bigger. So every every kind of pasta is a history, a wonderful history of our culture. And I told you that the pasta is only the, the last one. For example, the last one ingredient, because it's born only 500 years ago. This one are orecchiette, orecchiette, the small ears, like a small ear, okay? And orecchiette are typical of Apulia, Puglia, as, uh, or in other regions in south of Italy. The order is prepared by hand, one by one per one by hand. Uh, this is made industrially, but uh, the name is orecchiette, and it's perfect with uh, broccoli, yeah. Um, orecchiette with broccoli is the, the death of orecchiette. And then we have uh, this one. This one is Fusilli. Fusilli. Fusilli is a very old plate because it was made many years ago by hand. 
There are many kinds of fusilli. This is the industrial fusilli. For example, south of Naples, uh, in Cilento. I, I don't know if you know Castellabate, a small town in Cilento. <laughs> <laughs> they, prepare, they prepare fusilli by hand. Fusilli is the typical food of Castellabate, and there are some uh, friends from Castellabate, they are listening. And the, the other one is Corteccia. Corteccia is another kind of pasta very, very, very popular today, mostly with the uh, we, we, eat that, we eat it with vegetables. Okay. Broccoli, and then, and then we have so much food, so much food, farfalle. Okay. And then we have the, the most popular, I forgot the, the most important of them, le penne, the pants, the pants. Also the pants, of course, ribbed, striped, with stripes, everything, because you, you can have flat and ribbed. But in my house, everything is, is ribbed. Uh, penne is the most popular between the, the, the young generation. When you go to the restaurant uh, and you ask for uh, pennette al sugo, uh, penne with uh, sauce, uh, moreover, for, for uh, the babies. And uh, another option of pennette is the sigarette. Sigarette is like a small zita. Zita oh. already done. You have not to cut. And then we have linguine. Linguine is perfect with, uh, with seafood, uh, with, in, generally with food. And then we have tagliatelle is perfect with, uh, with sauce, with bolognese sauce. And then we have uh, calamarata, vaccheri, fusil. So we have so many. But I, I want to I wanna also expose you this size of pasta, very strange. Oh. The name is paccheri. Paccheri in Italy means uh, uh, slap, slap, okay? Okay, right. this is slap. But pakero is, is from Greek, pan keros. Pan, it means hand, keros, so it means all. So the pakero is not only a simple slap, but okay. it's a, a big slap given by all hand, okay? This is why pakero. And there is a very nice story about pakero that... Um, during a, um, a convention of uh, pasta makers, uh, pastai, uh, the, the, the goal was to invent a new size of pasta that was ready for, for putting uh, something inside, like ricotta cheese, like meat. So the, the boy, uh, one of the employers, realized this kind of uh, big uh, size of penna, it's like a pen, but it's so much bigger, and so without any shape, any, any good shape. So the, the boss gives to the, to the, to the boy a give, give slap. What did you do? What is this? But what happens that then the, this size of pasta was very appreciated from all the, 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 the component of the convention. And this is why... He, 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 the, the boss was constricted to ask, the, to excuse me, to say excuse me to the boy, and he decided to give to this size of pasta the name of the slab, the pacchero, he gave it to the boy. So there are so many sizes, so many packets. We go to open uh, my... Okay, I, I forgot this one. Oh. This one is mixed pasta. Pasta mista. Pasta mista is a long story, long story. In pasta mista, you know, you can, you can find uh, uh, mafaldine and tagliatelle and uh, ditalini. Uh, I don't know how you say ditalino. I, I, I told you this one. Ditalino, ditale. Ditale is the, the tool you use when you want to... You the tool a you need. Sorry? A needle? Yeah, a needle. Uh, you put on top of the of the of the finger to to do this. Okay, my yeah. English, yeah. My, oh English my, my English is macaroni. Yeah. I can speak only only of macaroni. <laughs> Thimble, maybe. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, many kinds of pasta. This is mixed pasta, and. The, it, it was not an invention. Of, it was an invention of Napolitan people, but it was born for, for a mistake. Because 
Until 50, 50 years ago, the, the pasta was not sold in packet like today. Yeah. Uh, mm, it was sold uh, on, on the weight. Uh, uh, or you, you go to the, to the butcher, to the, to, the, okay, to the man, and you ask for a, a certain quantity, half a kilo, one kilo of pasta. And it was uh, sold in, in a very special uh, uh, paper. The, the color was blue, uh, but a very special blue. And still today, that blue uh, and that kind of pasta we call carta maccheroni, the carta of maccheroni. Yeah, because it was used uh, uh, specially for to pack the pasta. Uh. This means that under the, the basket of the seller, there, are, there is always a, a broken pasta, the broken paccheri, the broken calamarata, the broken fusilli, so all this rest. And usually, what does it do? He tried to sell to sell this kind of pasta, mixed pasta. The, 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 the nickname of this pasta was the, the garbage, the, the small garbage, but in, in a positive way, in a positive yeah. way, yeah. it's a garbage. And in a time of reusing food, the, in that time, 50 years ago, they don't throw out, they don't throw away nothing. So this is kind of pasta, mixed pasta, many kinds of pasta, they were sold to a forfeit price, it's a lower price. It was less, uh, less expensive. For example, spaghetti were dried on, on the bamboo cane. No. So there, there was a bridge. Of, when they cut spaghetti, all the bridges on the bamboo cane, yeah. it, it's like a small garbage of pasta, and it was sold at lower price. And this is why... When uh, the productors start doing the, the, the packet of pasta, what happens that uh, we, we, uh, Neapolitan does not have any more the mixed pasta because it was the result of uh, a recycling pasta, the result uh, of, uh, of what, uh, what the pasta that is on the top, uh, on the bottom of the basket. So yeah. they ask it to the productors to make because it. they want to return to the mixed pasta, but it was strange because now there, is not, there isn't any more motivation to produce a mixed pasta, but now all the productors of pasta, they do the Make pasta it. mista. Yeah, the mixed Which pasta. Is kind of like a nostalgic thing, I guess. Yeah, or... Sorry? It's like a nostalgic. Yeah, 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 yeah. perfect. And, uh, uh, all the pasta, all the pasta you see is perfect to do another kind of plate of uh, recycling. You know that the, one of the most symbolic plate of uh, reuse the food. We, we don't throw out nothing, but to reuse the pasta, usually we do frittata of pasta, frittata di maccheroni, omelette of maccheroni. Uh, this is another, another, uh, wait, uh, another kind of uh, pasta, very, very typical of, uh, of uh, for example, of the Holy Monday, the Monday after Easter, uh, Lunedì dell'Angelo, the Monday of the Angel. Before the pandemia, uh, all Neapolitans goes uh, out of the city to have a picnic on the, on the grass, okay? Mm. And the typical food of... Uh, Holy Monday, lunedì dell'angelo, the Monday after Easter, was the omelette of maccheroni. With all the maccheroni of the day of the Easter, all the maccheroni that uh, they have remained, you use yeah. to eat with eggs and you have frittata to this for, for not throw away nothing. But now we love so much frittata di maccheroni that... Uh, we, we prepare pasta uh, specifically to prepare frittata maccheroni. And then uh, I forgot another one. Of course, uh, a lot of people like gnocchi. Gnocchi are made with the flour, with the flour and potatoes. Gnocchi is uh, very typical in Sorrento. Uh, because the typical plate in, uh, to eat gnocchi is gnocchi alla Sorrentina with yeah. uh, tomatoes and the mozzarella cheese, a typical food of Sorrento. But we can speak 
so so much anyway <laughs> anyway but Dale, tell us but a, a question about the production we have about 10 minutes left before yeah. Instagram will cut us off um is is pasta still being made sort of um you know in the old-fashioned way can you still find it uh you know sort of the more handmade style in around naples uh, uh, pasta handmade starting 3000 years ago 500 years ago in this Towns around the Naples, Gragnano, Castellammare, Torre Annunziata, they start doing uh, a form of uh, semi automatic pasta. It was born the torchio. Torchio is something to push down for a um, to um, so a, a semi industrial before the invention of steam. We are 500 years ago, so everything was very, very hard work to produce pasta. And the system of production was more or less the same until uh, mid-19th uh, century. What was the secret of uh, Gragnano? This is why still today, Gragnano is considered to be the, so the city of pasta. Gragnano, uh, at that time, has uh, three at least uh, perfect condition to become the city of the pasta. So, I, I, uh, first of all, the, we have many mills, at least 30 mills with water. There was a big river, the Vernotico, so we have the, the, the first ingredient of pasta. The, the, uh, the mills produce a lot of, um, of wheel. Second ingredient was the, the good water, because Vernotico was a, a great river, and so the second ingredient was okay. But what does the difference between the fresh pasta, the pasta made at home, and the dry pasta, the pasta you can keep one year, two years? What is the difference? It's the, the drying process. Mm -hmm. And the drying process, five years ago, you have to be done only uh, in the open air. So, but to, um, to avoid the the destruction of the pasta after the production, you need a very special climate, a climate that uh, changes at least three or four times a day, a climate where there is the sea, the wind from the sea, but also the, the humidity for the mountain. So the alternate of the humidity, the cold and the hot, so in one day, and at least, for example, still today, 50 hours of drying, so very long uh, drying, very low temperature, not so high temperature. This is why if we want to product the pasta in Gragnano district, this is why they have the DOP. And one of the rules, the most important, is that the drying has to be very slow, at least 50 hours. So this is a, this is a good uh, a guarantee that uh, we, we can have always in the future a great quality of pasta because pasta for us is like a, is like a personal family uh, we, we can appreciate the difference the difference from one size one productor and another productor for example as you saw uh, all many we, we can we can tell some brand okay we can yeah, speak yeah. what are some brand? suggestions actually because <laughs> there is um, in my family, I use uh, since many years this kind of pasta, Garofalo. Garofalo is a, a productor of Gragnano. Uh, I mean, when I say Gragnano, I'm speaking of a small town of uh, 10,000 uh, 10, people, very, very small. But you have to stay inside the land of Gragnano if you want, uh, if you want to be a DOP. And... Uh, so you have to, to make many rules. The quantity of Italian wet has to be very important. For example, Sonia that is following, yeah. I use the Di Martino. Yeah. Di Martino yeah. is another one. Di Martino, they, they, they use only Italian wet. Uh, for me, my family, I use Garofalo since many, 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 many years. But moreover, because uh, I like to go in, in the factory. I like, I, I go many times to the Garofalo factory to see the, the machine. It is wonderful. It is really uh, wonderful to see because, for example, uh, they have the extrusors that, that they are um, uh, pieces of art, uh, really pieces of art. They are not in plastic. They are not, they, they are in bronze. 
and the being in bronze, this allows to the pasta to have a very hard skin, very special skin, very, everyone is different from the other because the bronze guarantee that the, the skin is very, and it, it, it gets very, very um, well the, 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 the souls. So this kind of skin is guaranteed that, uh, that the sauce is very flower to, to the past. I forgot one. Uh, yeah. In Italy, we say that uh, the best spaghetti is spaghetti very quickly, very quickly, shue shue. Shue shue is another Arabian word. Even if, if shue shue in Arabic means... It means uh, slowly. It's slow. In, in Napoleon, in Napoleon it's the opposite. Shue shue, it means very fast. Very fast. <laughs> we use um, the then, word. So we, all, we only have a few minutes left before the Instagram live cuts us off. So I just want okay. to quickly ask you what some, some brands that people might want to look for. Quality okay. pasta. Some brands, uh, the, the most important brands I think all over the world is Barilla. But I don't use to eat Barilla. I prefer okay. it. Small what would you recommend? Yeah, I recommend Garofalo or uh, Di Martino, or I, I can recommend Pasta di Gragnano. That is a DOP pasta. That is a very, very high quality pasta. It's uh, not handmade, but uh, with all the processing and uh, the quality is very good. And I think that uh, Garofalo, there is also Garofalo in the USA. So, and if um, just to say, if anybody is interested, in, we'll get a list of some of what you're recommending. And if people want to write to info at culinarybackstreets.com, info at culinarybackstreets.com, send us an email, and Amadeo, we can provide them a list of, <laughs> of recommendations. Yeah, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody uh, uh, some of the more quality ones, and um, and we can we can also mention some of the dishes that you talked about today and. Uh, and uh, yeah. anything. So send us a note. Info. And I wait all of you, of course, in Naples to to, to do the tour, the culinary backstreets tour, where we eat a lot of pasta, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. So when when everyone's allowed out of their homes, we uh, encourage everyone to come join us in Naples uh, to visit uh, either on one of our tours or one of our trips. And. Uh, since we're about to run out of time, I just want to say, Amadeo, thank you so much. It was really amazing. No, uh, you, you are great. You are great. So interesting. I, I like you and all the company. I say hello to all our friends. Everyone. And uh, this, this will be available on Instagram as a story for another 24 hours, but we'll also try to save it in a way that people can watch because uh, this was very informative, really, really incredibly interesting. Okay, I say hello also to my all my colleagues of Naples, all the guys that uh, that they will we will meet you in in our tours, uh, Chiara, Sonia, and Stefania and Marco, all the other uh, our uh, colleagues of Calinari Backstreets Naples. Fantastic! All right, Amadeo, thank you so much. It was fantastic. So wow. now I have to eat all this pasta. I don't yeah. want to throw it away. Send us some. <laughs> I will be very fat tomorrow. Okay, bye bye. Ciao ciao a tutti. Ciao 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 ciao. Thanks, Amadeo. Thank you. Thank you.